Good afternoon. My name is Joseph Lloyd and I source cars for people on a professional basis. Although most of the cars I source are between £1,000 and £5,000, very often I've been asked to show something a little bit cheaper on the channel and so I came up with No Budget Reviews, the series where we look at cars that you can buy in good condition with an MOT for under a thousand pounds and you can enjoy driving. We don't film this in an expensive manner, we don't use separate microphones, we don't use fluid head tripods, we don't even use a DSLR, but we do have a lot of fun. Well, viewers, I woke up this morning and, uh, you know, I feel very different from what I normally do. I've just suddenly realised that I, I need a brightly coloured vehicle for my family. Diesels are the best things ever, and it has to be French. I think we might be calling this No Budget Reviews Accidental Hub Not Rip-Off Edition again. Obviously, Ian Seabrook is a wonderful man. Um, I've met him several times and uh, there would be no reason for my channel to exist without him. But let's just uh, imagine, since I got a bump on my head today, that uh, we are searching for a new vehicle for Ian Seabrook, his lady friend and her children. This is a 2006 Peugeot Expert E7. It's owned by uh, Alex, who uh, is a channel viewer. And these are actually quite rare. I do apologize for wind noise, by the way. We're actually in sandbags, which is one of the uh, most expensive areas of real estate in the world by square meter. But we're in a, a vehicle that costs under a thousand pounds because this is no budget reviews. I mean, look at this, it's just amazing. Gaps in the plastic, broken trim. Dashboard mounted gear lever, handbrakes over on the right. Very the electric window switches, and one of them works. Steering wheel mounted controls. These vans were made um, in northern France at a place called Valenciennes in a joint venture between uh, Fiat and Peugeot Citroën, as it was at the time. And obviously, with Stellantis now existing, they were again the same company. But the engineering is very um, sort of dominated by Peugeot Citroen thinking because the joint venture also made what's called the Euro vans which were the Peugeot 806, the Fiat Ulysse, I think that's how you say it, the Citroen Evasion which was called the Synergie in this country because Evasion is probably not a very positive thing, it's a um, sort of smacks of tax evasion which may or may not be connected to anybody living in this area. Um, and um, the Citroen version of, of, of this as, as, as a van was actually called the Jumpy. So I shall open the door of my Jumpy uh, and uh, have a look inside. Obviously, a Citroen thought that that wasn't maybe the best name to be marketed in this country, so they called it the Dispatch, which isn't as good as, as Jumpy. So I'll Jumpy into my Jumpy and have a sit down on these, uh, on these seats. My gosh, I don't know, the seats are not very, they're not very comfortable viewers, so it might be a bit of a problem for people going any further than a, you know, a few miles. Look at the space above there, there's actually a space of putting all kinds of secret things in there. Um, and, uh, you know, there was actually a wheelchair ramp that used to move in, in there, so you've got big yellow, big yellow handles for a big yellow taxi. And they have paved paradise and put up a parking lot. We'll have a look at uh, the the ramp here. Unfortunately, the ramp doesn't actually work. This is no longer a licensed Bournemouth taxi. It was for uh, quite a while. And uh, in a second, I'll show you where they uh, actually painted the outside because for some reason in Bournemouth, I, maybe somebody um, who listens to Wave 105, uh, who's a local station around here, will actually tell me 
um, why they need to be yellow in Bournemouth, but uh, you know, I don't actually know that. There is actually the ramp we used to clip onto um, the, the one that comes out of the side or used to. So the boot space as well, there's no boot space whatsoever, there's absolutely none. Just enough to fit the ramp in. So if you've got luggage, I presume you just put it over there. So we'll open this door again. And you can see here that this used to be silver and that's all they did on the outside and just do a kind of basic spray paint job to make them yellow. But uh, you're climbing in and out, well it's very easy, you can sort of walk around in the back of here. It looks like those actually move forward and back as well, that's, that's how you get a you know, boot space if you actually need any kind of boot space. It looks like it might have been some kind of ashtray on there, maybe, but it's not anymore. Yeah. I think we'd better leave that alone, otherwise we might break more things, viewers. Now your real three-point seat belts for well, everyone. I don't know why these seats just... It's just not very comfortable. I think it's because after over 15 years of of use this has got a little bit on the uh, on the tired side in terms of the seating so get out like this that is very easy obviously being something that uh, is French and uh, is a design that dates back to 1994 can't expect it to be perfect but actually considering it's lived by the sea for a lot of it's working life, that's not too bad. We'll get in and uh, have a look at the interesting driving position. Wow, it's windy out here, viewers. Right hand handbrake, seat covers, of course, because you don't want to sit on someone's done a kebab the night before. Ooh. That might be the vaguest gear change I've ever felt in my life. Still, that won't worry uh, Mr. Seabrook. You can uh, drive vehicles without using the clutch. Fantastic. So the, <laughs> the electric window and mirror controls, because most of these uh, Jumpy-based uh, based vans, the expert, the dispatch, and the Scudo, you. Uh, didn't get them. You, you've got nasty, nasty, nasty plastic interior door handles, a window winder, which this doesn't have, but you didn't get these fancy controls for the ramp, and that actually was for the taxi light. That's actually that's been taken off because we are a, hmm, a secret unlicensed minicab. Not really, viewers. I do have a couple of uh, people who watch this channel who are members of Her Majesty's Constabulary and so I better be careful about what I say. Um, steering wheel control that's very 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 French. Just the whole ambience of kind of, of kind of this is just, just a bit sort of nasty and sort of circa 1980 87 or something. Um, probably when about you know these things were designed. But it's fairly logically laid out. We've actually got air conditioning in this one, which is amazing. Um, wouldn't have expected that, but it does have it. It seems pretty. It seems pretty simple. It's very, very kind of Lancia sort of Fiat. This kind of idea here. Perhaps they had a, a hand in the design of these controls and the way that they looked. And I sort of like that. Certainly, the gear stick being here is very, very convenient. It's not like the transits of the year, which have some long sprouting thing coming out of the floor. Um, Yes. I think you better take a pause here though, viewers, and uh, we will see if we can get the documents into the right position. Right, viewers, here are my secret mission documents, and uh, let's see if I fit the glove box. No. Never mind, though. We've got this storage area up here. Wow, you could hide all sorts of documents up there. How exciting. We've also got rather sort of uh, less than good plastic, but 
she very hard wearing um, on the door and big pockets down here loads of things for ref sort of breath mints and uh, whatever you need this is oh that, oh, that feel oh, oh. Uh. Ah. <laughs> I was not expecting that that's pretty good no rev counter because I don't think any Jumpy derivative actually got one. Um, don't need that sort of thing in this. Let's have a look under the bonnet and see what's there. So this is a, a two litre, uh, I think it's called the DW10 engine. Uh, just also known as an HDI. She's down to 110 horsepower. Same one used in a load of different Persian Citroëns at the time. And it's very, very cramped under there. I mean, I wouldn't want to work on a lot of that myself. Uh, possibly, though, it would provide for amusing antics at the uh, Hubnot workshop if you did. So, uh, not necessarily a disadvantage. You'll notice as well that uh, it says camper vans only here, and that's actually a deliberate joke because a lot of these, <laughs> a lot of these. Uh, are now camper vans. There's very few uh, of this design actually left that haven't been converted into them and even fewer of these uh, E7s because they were only made with the facelift that came in in 2004 and production of this generation stopped I think around December 2006, January 2007 so this is quite a rare beast indeed and a brightly coloured one too. So viewers, we're just outside Rick Stein's restaurant here. I haven't got any money to eat there though, there's no budget reviews. So uh, we shall just drive past and go round the Sandbags Peninsula. The gearbox in this, in this van is... Um, I don't even know what to say. It, it, it's sort of approximate. I think is the closest thing I can say to it. Bear in mind though, this this van has done 224,000 miles, so we can't expect it to be in the first flush of youth. Drive position is a little bit weird. I have driven vans actually before. Um, I've driven more modern ones though. The closest thing I've driven to this would be a Ford Tineo from 2008, which again has a dash mounted gear lever like this. But it doesn't feel as, as absolutely, utterly unconnected to what's going on as this does. Um, but that didn't have 225,000 miles on it. Certainly, every little bump and imperfection in the road is sort of is being uh, absorbed by my body, not the van. I think that's second. Yep, it is. Off we go. So strange to be driving around an area where the houses cost five million pounds in a van that didn't even cost a thousand. But that's the way we like it on no budget reviews. So the engines available in the Jean P derivatives were a uh, 1.6. Fiat petrol engine. I think that was only in the Scudo for the very early ones. That generated 75 horsepower. Later on, I think in about 2000, these vans were fitted with a 2 litre EW10 petrol engine with 136 horsepower. I think that's the same as used in a Peugeot 406. I don't think I've ever, ever seen one of those things. The forbidden fuel engines, and we, uh, we're talking about them on the channel because tonight Matthew, I am in Seabrook, um, were initially two very familiar engines to anybody who 
has driven a Persia War of Citroen with forbidden fuel from the 80s or 90s, a 70 horsepower 1.9 non-turbo engine and then a 92 brake horsepower turbo engine. Again in about 2000 for the uh, Euro 3 emissions compliance, those engines were totally ditched, those old XUDs. And uh, some new HDI engines came in. I think one was called VEW8 and one VEW10, but I could be, t sorry, DW8 and DW10, I could be completely wrong about that. But they were badged HDI generally, apart from the 1.9, which was a different 1.9 and still generated 70 horsepower, but it was a Euro 3 engine. The 2 litres, which were available, um, mainly in 8 valve form, although I think the Scudo Combinato got a 16 valve version of the HDI. Uh, there were ones which generated, again, about 93 horsepower, so not very different um, from the old 1.9. And this one, 110 horsepower. The 16 valve version used in the Scudo Combinato also generated 110 horsepower. I have absolutely no idea why they had to actually have that engine. It absolutely makes no sense. Because it didn't do anything, I don't think, particularly. Maybe somebody in the comment section below will correct me. Oh dear viewers, I just uh, thought about something that we don't normally talk about on the channel, but of course, because my name's Ian Seabrook today, that doesn't matter at all. Oh yes, and the mounts in the way too, even though we're travelling along the seashore and seeing people indulging in windsurfing and all kinds of exciting things, uh, because that's the way it goes on no budget reviews. The seat is reasonably comfortable. The driving position though is a little bit, it's a little bit weird, but then again it's a van, so they generally are not like a car. The gear change is the strangest thing of all, it just has a lot of play in it. And third is particularly difficult to find, it's a bit like trying to hunt for something underneath a settee, it's that sort of, that sort of thing. But for something that carries eight people, although it's called an E7, it carries eight actually, because this bench seat is for people who are very familiar with each other. It's not difficult to drive at all, it doesn't feel massive or anything like that. I keep thinking I'm going to be hailed by somebody on the side of the road because, uh, you know, Bournemouth taxis are very distinctively painted in this colour. But it just it feels similar to driving something like, I don't know, a BX or something like that. It just, with conventional suspension in it. Things all feel kind of loose and they rattle and things like that, but when you bear in mind the age of this van and also the fact that they were built together in partnership with the Fiat, it doesn't produce a lot of <laughs> it doesn't really sort of sort of produce a lot of hatred within me, I think. It's part of the charm really. Right, let's uh, turn round and go back and form some kind of conclusions about this uh, X37 or Jumpy. What has happened, viewers? I've just suddenly come to my senses and I've realised that I've been driving around in a bright yellow forbidden fuel taxi. Why on earth would I want to do that? Well, possibly if I was the MC bro, then this would be absolutely perfect. It's got bits of trim hanging off and it's got really high mileage and it's French and it's got a silly name and um, yeah, uh, and you can fit all, the, all this family in it. Perfect, absolutely perfect. Um, I didn't do a wiper test because, uh, you know, this is no budget reviews. We don't entirely rip everything off from me and Seabrook, but uh, I think if you can find one of these, they're very, very rare now because a lot of them have done intergalactic mileage like this one has. 
and you you know don't mind a little bit falling off the interior and your bit of rust and you change the cam belt and service these properly then they could probably go on for quite a long time Alex paid well under a thousand pounds for this van and it wasn't just like he paid under a thousand pounds for it you know a couple of years ago when second-hand car prices were lower it was very recently that actually he picked this up so it's the definition of no budget reviews accidental hub not ripple edition i think i think we've done it you know you can uh, sell that toyota camry and buy one of these anyway thank you ever so much indeed for watching uh, next time we will uh, revert to normal service uh, we will be not talking about forbidden fuel again don't forget to subscribe to the channel and, of course, visit the Hubnut channel for more exciting automotive adventures. Uh, don't forget to like this video, leave a comment below. And if you wish to become a channel member, press the button to join below. Thank you.